What's up everybody, hey it's Charles and today we're looking at how professional technicians organize their toolbox. All right, so it may come as no surprise that a technician after a while accumulates a lot of tools and a lot of other stuff as well. And we keep them in giant toolboxes just like this. This may look familiar. This is the box that you guys see in most of my videos. And we're gonna open it up and check out how I organize things inside of here and some of the tools that I've collected over the years. So of course, as a professional, one of the most important things is going to be a ton of different stickers on your toolbox. Whether that's a sticker for car parts or events or coffee, beer, maybe YouTube superstars, your own sticker, car cleaning stuff, it doesn't really matter. Each sticker does increase your ability to fix cars by at least five to 10, depending on the size of the sticker. Some stickers with Chewbacca's on them may be worth a little more, or these that are super ultra rare. Some of the things are gonna also be car products. How will people know places that you visited or what kind of tools you have in your side of your toolbox? if you don't in fact have the sticker to prove it. I also like to keep a GoPro mount on the outside because of course we have to film everything that we do. And what would a toolbox be without at least one drawer with duct tape on it? And of course you're not allowed to put the stickers in nice neat order, they have to be totally random, otherwise you'll never win the sticker game. And continuing on the outside, of course we all have stuff on top of our toolboxes from our collectibles and mugs to things that we may or may not use to fix cars, as well as air fresheners, different cars that we have stored, old containers that we have no need for anymore, as well as boxes that are completely empty. Many technicians will also have fabulous awards of unspeakable value. Unspeakable value. Unspeakable value. Unspeakable value. Some might even use the underneath of their toolbox for storage, but that's mostly for spiders and pieces of zip ties that you cut and didn't clean up. All right, let's go ahead and move on into the inside of the box. In the hutch, you can see this is where I store a lot of the bulk items. Everything from old Apple containers to a box of pens that I opened and took one out of but never threw the package away. Of course, we gotta have plenty of empty or mostly empty storage containers more storage containers, trash bags, a few safety cones, more empty packaging from tools we probably still owe the Snap-on guy 50 bucks a week for the next 50 weeks for, a little container of razor blades, well, you guys probably know why we have that. Of course, nothing but the finest when it comes to tools. This is one of the really common sets. And of course, we're missing a 10 millimeter. That comes standard with a kit like this. More empty wrappers. This bag for some reason. You gotta also make sure that you keep your power inverter inside of your toolbox. That comes in handy when you're traveling with your box. This is a dry erase marker in honor of Engineering Explained, also known as Jason. I like to just keep one glove, one right hand glove. It's like my throwback to Michael Jackson. Uh, garden hose fittings, of course. Some random screws, a drill bit, a razor blade again, and of course some brass feeler gauges. I think you're already starting to see a really solid, sophisticated organization pattern. A construction manual for your camera, a random piece of paper, uh, reindeer elf ears, this envelope that has nothing in it, more organization trays, of course, uh, more GoPro paraphernalia, at least one trim removal tool that has broken and then been modified, drill bits that don't have a complete set, more feeler gauges, something most professional technicians use on a daily basis. At least one picture of your dog. A cutout, wood cutout of the United States for the US coins. Some sort of padded thing. Several shop DAP license plate frames as well as a OBX racing power gasket for all the horsepowers. Just like stickers add mechanic fixing abilities to your toolbox. This kind of gasket adds so much horsepower to your car. We of course would be nothing without our repair information that we have, all kinds of different stuff. Of course, I look back to and, uh, and, and use these to, to remember how to fix cars. A mat that's really dirty, more trash bags, more bags, a towel for some reason, peg hooks. Of course, you can see the pegged 
section in the back that's where I keep all the really important tools, foam padding, some actual real life Volkswagen technician training manuals. A lot of that is top secret documentation, car parts, a charger to something that you don't know what it is, another set of tools that are missing some. Of course, the most important spec book for the Golf GTI and Golf R, a radio frame. It actually has the 10 millimeter, but I just lost it. Oh, and I lost the deep well one too. Some heat shrink, of course, as much of that as possible. Use it whenever possible. An old ribbed belt. Some emergency triple squares. You never know when you're gonna need emergency triple squares. A uh, charger that's never been used, always important to have in your box. Uh, a sander, you know, every mechanic needs a random orbit sander kit. Of course, you also have to have the box for it in there too. Several computers that don't work. A uh, very small laptop, a very big laptop. This one you can see has a lot of stickers on it too. That adds extra power to the, uh, to the laptop. Unopened notebook paper. More tributes to Jason from Engineering Explained. He taught me everything I know about cars. This is a left glove to not go with the other glove. A shelf with some things on it. You gotta always listen to your jams when you're, uh, when you're working on cars. An actual tool for fixing cars. This is a counter hold for a CCTA. More Volkswagen propaganda. Quick reference guides. A Black Forest license plate frame. A box of ammunition. Some uh-oh, stripped bolt removers. A coaster. Some sandpaper that oil filter that you never installed in the car, another oil filter that you never installed in the car, a light that works a little bit, various assorted keys that you don't know what they go to, these cups. As you can see, plenty of random bits, a little bit of fuel line, an air freshener, screwdriver, some paper, some locks to keep the riffraff out, plenty of electrical tape, of course, some spray paint to cover up your mistakes. Keys to a car that you don't know what it is. Every good mechanic has business cards. Plastic weld because you know, you probably broke a lot of stuff. Several random wiring pieces, a thermometer. Another oil filter that didn't get installed. Another oil filter that didn't get installed. Another oil filter that didn't get installed. Didn't get installed. An empty box. Another oil filter that didn't get installed. Owner's manual to a Tiguan. Glass cleaner that's empty. Another oil filter that didn't get installed. Some Velcro. Electrical tape, of course. Several wires. A nickel for the pop machine. This thing that I've been looking for for months. An impact with no battery. Several well-organized wrenches. And some double-sided tape. And of course, more loose change and random bits. This is really the great thing about having a hutch. You can keep all of this stuff really nice and well organized, all your oil filters that you never installed. You can keep them nice, safe, so nobody will mess with them. As we move to the top drawer, this is typically where I keep all the bigger tools, all the deep sockets. You can see we have all the half inch drive right here, 3 8 drive, quarter inch drive. This is all gonna be metric. That's the only thing I work on. Some of these are gonna be standard sockets of various assorted sizes. Every good mechanic should have a ton of different colored zip ties. All the zip ties, you need lots of colors. Several gaskets, more random papers. Of course, all the license plate rings. A really nice extension organizer. Again, more business cards and parts that you didn't install in cars. A CD, more jams to listen to. Silicone sealant. What would a toolbox be without a pill bottle, I guess? Random beer taps. Emblems that you stole off someone's car. A compass. Tool kits that you took out of a car. A clicker to cha train your neighbor. Broken pliers. This thing. More zip ties. I would have a multimeter, but I didn't, so I just have the case, so it looks like I have one. A pipe cutter. One good screwdriver. More zip ties. Some seals that didn't get installed in a car, because why would you install them? So as you can see, there's a lot of really important stuff inside the top drawer. This is where kind of the main tool action happens. Let's keep moving down. This drawer is where I keep all of my wrenches, as well as some screwdrivers, an extra flashlight battery. You can see the various assorted ratchets and screwdrivers, an ignition coil that's bad with a spark plug just in case, one really big wrench. Jason from Engineering Explained touched this wrench, so it's famous. 
several more wrenches. They go there. Again, one glove. This is a left hand this time. An old air ratchet that probably still works but doesn't have a fitting. Several really important specialized wrenches as well. Another really well organized, important drawer. I like to keep similar things together. All of these tubes, of course, are the same thing. Some is glue, some is silicone, some is wood filler. Then, of course, you got to have a tap set and die set to go along with it. Of course, as professional technicians, we need a lot of paint stirrers to stir our paints. A chalk snap line, a big hole saw for when we don't really want to do it the right way. We just drill a big hole and access a bolt some kind of connector, several Allen wrenches, as every good technician has a lot of different Allen wrenches, clamps for when we break apart, we can glue it and clamp it together so no one knows, more random sealants. This one's nice because it's really hard. So, uh, you know, it comes out of the two really difficult. That makes it work better. Door stoppers, some plate for something. Oh, a carpenter's hammer is really important for a automotive technician. Bicycle parts, obviously a file, a little wood dowel, a spigot, of course, everybody knows what these are for, and uh, a vapor thing. This is actually this vapor thing. It might look like some kind of monitor for like a motorcycle or something, but it's actually so you know how much vape you have, how many puffs you got, how long you can puff it on. It, it'll hook to your vape box. Uh, that's why there's so many wires to it. That works really, really well. All the guys in the shop really love that. Moving on down, here's your instruction manual for the vape. A lot of different ties some cords, uh, you know, outlet stuff in case you got to install some outlets in a car, some wiring, a pipe bender. Of course, every good tech needs a pipe bender. This stuff, this is great for when you break trim panels, you can stick it back on. Another glove, this is another left glove. A jumper lead set that uh, I let the smoke out of. Of course, some saw blades, and this is all wiring down here for the, uh, for the vapor. Keep moving down. This is where the bulky stuff gets stored. So we have a tachometer to know how many RPMs your toolbox can turn. A little, another vape box. This is a different vape controller. Storage box for your vape. A flashlight. This actually has a built-in vape too. So that's cool that it's like dual purpose. More notebooks. You gotta have a lot of notebooks. Me mechanics take a lot of notes, but we don't read instructions. You would be right if you think I own like 100 cars with all my license plate frames. A scraper, a giant battery. This is uh, a vape battery. It's uh, 5,000 microfarads, so that's a lot. It's like the biggest they have. Old school Chappelle show. A light switch from a Mark I Cabriolet. Clothes pins, obviously. So you can see this is, again, where all the really bulky stuff that maybe you don't use every day lives. Moving on down. Here's where we get to some more good stuff again more shop DAP license plate frames. Some might think I'm a bit of a fanboy. They'd be right. Old wireless microphone that never worked right. Shrink wrap, a lot of seat belts. You know, you gotta cut those out every time you replace one. The Apex brochure, another glove. This is a right glove this time. Jumper cables, old speaker. That's great for testing purposes. Milwaukee bit kit. You can see that's stored really well in here. More clamps to uh, help fix all the stuff that we break. A box of something that I don't know. Wheel lock. So good stuff. Let's keep moving on. This is where I keep all the uh, nuts and bolts. You know when you do a job and you actually uh, Finish it with leftover hardware. That really just means you did a better job than the factory did. So this is where I keep all of that stuff, you know, obvious kind of screws for cars right here. Really great screws for screwing fenders back on and bumper covers. A pen, because we know a mechanic's best friend is a pen. Old flashlight. You can never have too many beer openers. So this is again where I keep all the stuff that I have left over when I do a job better than the factory does. More outlets. This for some reason seems to be something we replace in cars a lot. That's why I have so many in stock in this drawer. Several tubes of caulk, some more hose fittings, these balls with sticks on them, all these things. Keep moving down, we have some wiring. Lots of different sandpaper, a caulk gun. These are actually brackets for that vape battery that we saw a few minutes ago. The instruction manual for your smoker, a bad valve, AAA sticker, in case we gotta ever have our box towed. This drawer is pretty empty. That was actually two caulk guns. This was my original one here. Here's our hole saw guide, so when we don't wanna access that bolt and don't wanna randomly drill a hole, we have a guide to help us. More hole saws and padlocks and light switches. 
you know, just uh, this is actually just really, really common stuff for I think pretty much every mechanic in their toolbox. It may not be on their top drawer that they go in all the time, but things like a wood plane and this old hard drive are gonna really be stuff that almost everybody has. And finally, the best for last, the drawer of parts that got shotgunned and replaced incorrectly. Things like this turn signal switch, all these spark plug wires, some things you know you don't even want to take out of the bag because they're so good. Screws. This is typically the misdiagnosis drawer where you just throw everything in because you don't want to admit that you did it wrong. Sometimes you build custom boost controllers and that ends up being kind of cool. Some weed whacker blades, belts that didn't get replaced, dirty air filters just in case you want to you know, test that out. You can see plenty of parts down there too. I won't bore you guys with going through each and every part. Just know that there's a lot of parts in here. And then the worst part about drawers like this is you can't, you can't always close them right. Sometimes parts get stuck and then you end up having to restore it up in the top. All right, everybody, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up there. I hope you enjoyed the tour. I hope you like how I have everything organized in this box. Remember, professional mechanics organize their things in a way to make the jobs go as fast as possible, so everything's at a really easy, really quick reach, which I think I've accomplished incredibly well inside of this yellow box. I just wish my red box at the shop was organized just the same. If you have any questions or comments, put it down in the comment section. If you like the video, throw it a thumbs up on YouTube. I always appreciate that. You can also subscribe right here on YouTube or on the blog at HumbleMechanic.com. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, Snapchat. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. And of course, if you haven't gotten it by now, April Fools. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you. Love you. Throw it down in the comment section. Hope you enjoyed this. This was pretty fun for me. That's it. I'm done. I'm out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Oh, and tune in at some point because I will be cleaning and organizing this box, and I think you're really going to like that video.